Welcome back. Software is digital information that consists of computer instructions. We've explored the term digital information before. Remember, it's information that is stored digitally using a series of ones and zeros. So in this way, we can store instructions that tell the computer what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Remember that the computer has no intelligence and must be told each and every step required to perform a task. The terms program and application, or app for short, all refer to software. A program consists of many instructions telling the computer what to do. Software can be made up from one or more programs. Applications are a set of computer programs designed to allow the end user to perform a task or group of tasks. There are very subtle differences between the terms. Just ensure that you know that they all refer to instructions that tell the computer what to do and how to do it. Let's take a look at some common types of software. Operating systems. These are essential to the operating of any computer. They give the machine the essential instructions for it to work. They also provide a universal interface to the hardware for the other types of software to work with. In the next lecture, we'll be taking a detailed look at what operating systems do. Common names in this sector are Microsoft Windows, Windows 10 being the latest version. Apple Mac OS, High Series, the latest version, which runs on Apple's laptops and desktop computers. On Apple's mobile devices, phones and tablets, the operating system is called iOS. The latest version of this is version 11. Competing with iOS is Google's Android. This runs on a lot of non-Apple phones and tablets from manufacturers such as Samsung, Sony and LG, to name a few. Word processors allow you to enter and store text. This could be a letter or the next best-selling novel. Most newer word processors allow you to do some basic formatting, such as adding pictures into a document. Popular products in this category are Microsoft Word, pictured here, or there is Apple Pages or Google's Docs, which is an online application used through a web browser. Spreadsheets allow a user to enter data in rows and columns. This is most commonly used for calculations such as for accountancy or inventory data. Here we have Microsoft Excel. Others include Apple Numbers or Google Sheets. Presentation software is used to show information in the form of slideshows. It's what I'm using here as a backdrop to this lecture. I'm using Microsoft PowerPoint, and this is a picture of it in editing mode. This is where you create your slides. Once you've created your slideshow, it can be played back so each slide takes full screen. Other examples are Apple's Keynote and Google Slides. Desktop publishing software is used to create printed page layouts. This could be a poster or to lay out a complete glossy magazine. In this category, we have Microsoft Publisher. You might have noticed it looks a bit or a lot like Microsoft Word from earlier. In fact, most modern word processing applications have some level of desktop publishing ability. It comes down to what you're creating as to which one would be more suited to the task. A glossy magazine layout would be easier in a desktop publisher, but if you want to include a few pictures to emphasize a point in an essay, then a word processor will manage this fine. Other examples include Adobe InDesign, Quark Express, and Scribus. Not too sure how to pronounce the last one, Scribus. Next, we have databases. These allow you to store and retrieve digital information. These are commonly used in companies to keep track of customer details or stock levels. Have you used Amazon to shop online? When you've entered what you're looking for, Amazon brings back a list of related items. It shows product details, price, availability, even customer reviews. All this detail is stored in a database. If you've searched online for anything, perhaps you use Google to find an answer to or a website. Then what you've done is ask Google's database to give you details of sites related to your query. Software in this category falls very distinctly into two categories. Those aimed at home users, including titles such as Microsoft Access, Apple FileMaker Pro and Base, which can be found in OpenOffice and LibreOffice. Then we have Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL or Oracle. These are aimed at large organizations that store large quantities of information need it available to multiple people or computers at the same time. An example of this is loyalty card data. Every time you use a loyalty card, when, where and what was bought is being stored. At a later date, if the company that owned the card wants to run a promotion targeting people that buy a particular brand, they can query the database to retrieve details of everyone that bought that particular brand or product. I mentioned web browsers in a previous lecture. Allow you to view web pages. Some web pages allow you to interact with them. This might be to play a game 
or to access email or to watch a video. But this is software that is being run by the website and the browser is allowing you to access it. Microsoft has a couple of web browsers. Here is Internet Explorer or the newer Microsoft Edge. Or you have my personal favourite, Google Chrome. Or there's Apple Safari if you'll use an Apple device. The last category of software to look at is email. Many newer systems allow you to access email using a web browser, although it's still common to use a dedicated app for mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets. Applications in this category include Microsoft Outlook. This is very popular in businesses and is normally used to access an email account that has been given as part of a person's work or job. Don't confuse it with the website Outlook.com though. This is a website which allows you to use specific email addresses ending in either Outlook.com or Hotmail.com. The topic of email can be a little confusing, as the lines between how it is used and access have become blurred. Just remember that there are email clients which are pieces of software which run on the computer or mobile device. The term run means that the software is running or stepping through its instructions. Other examples of email client are Apple Mail and Mozilla Thunderbird. Then there's email which is accessed through a web browser, such as Google Gmail or Yahoo Mail. When you buy most software, you don't actually own what you think you've just paid for. Instead, you're buying a license which allows you to use the software. The actual copyright remains with the producer. This license is normally called an End User License Agreement, or EULA for short. Have you ever installed anything on a computer? If so, you've been confronted by a really long, wordy section of legal speak. Well, this is a EULA, and what you are meant to do is read all of it. Yeah, all of it. They normally run into many pages. Then click the I agree button to say that you abide by the terms of the license. However, it's most common for everyone to just click the button without reading the fine print. I must confess, I'm as guilty of this as the next person. But as with any other legal document, it should be read before agreeing. Now, as I mentioned, software isn't owned by the user, it is licensed for use by them. Here are some of the common types of software licenses. The first is proprietary. This is a software that must be bought before it is allowed to be used, such as Microsoft Windows, which is commonly bought with a new computer. Most apps that you have to pay for in a mobile marketplace, such as Google App Store for Android, fall into this category. Then there's trial software. This allows you to install and use the software without paying for it, but only for a limited time, commonly 30 days or so. After this time, you will have to buy the software to continue using it. Often, if you haven't purchased a license, the software stops working or severely limits what you can do with it once the free trial period has ended. Shareware isn't so common now, but it's software that can be shared and distributed freely. It normally has a trial period after which you must buy a license, but it doesn't usually go into restricted mode once the trial ends. It relies on the honesty of the user to purchase a license. Free software, commonly called freeware, also isn't very common anymore. It's software that can be freely distributed and used without a trial period or requiring license to be purchased. I've just said that freeware isn't very common anymore. It doesn't mean there isn't free software available. It just tends to be distributed as open source software. This normally has the same use and distribution rights as freeware, but with the added benefit that the software's code is freely available. Software's code is the readable instructions which tell the computer what to do. This means that software can be customised, adapted or improved. Normally the only restriction on this is that any modifications to the underlying code should be freely available for others to use. In this lecture we have defined the term software and looked at many different examples and the categories they fall into. We have defined the term EULA, that's End User Licence Agreement, and that you don't purchase software but instead you licence it. We finished by looking at several different models of software licensing, including proprietary and open source. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.